Well, good morning. It's Laura Sikorsky from Sikorsky's Thinkabouts. Thanks for joining us today. Our show is based on customer service, customer experience, and technology. And our goal is to help you out there with any concerns, any problems that you may have in the work environment and the workplace. Today, I am very excited to have with me Deirdre Siegel. Hi, She's Laura. a friend from uh, maybe 14 years ago and very excited because she is the CEO and founder of Pair Core Solutions. And she works closely with senior executives, business owners, organizational teams, and providing what Pair does wonderfully management consulting. HR management, and that's when their team comes in and acts as the HR department. A, a great savings, a great, I think that's one of the best that your business does. Certainly it's talent acquisition, and that's recruiting, <clears throat> behavioral analytics, leadership development, and of course career development. Deirdre's focus at the firm is primarily organizational development, leadership development, and behavioral analytics. So she was perfect today for us to talk about our topic, which is <coughs> empathy in the workplace. But one thing I'd like Deirdre to explain to us is she is a certified Colby consultant. And I'd like you to explain to, the, to our audience what that means. Sure. So... Uh if any, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the world of assessments in, uh, in the workplaces. So there's, uh, if you think about three parts of the mind, you have the cognitive, which is pretty much IQ, skills, mm -hmm. knowledge, and you could jump online at any time, Google free IQ test, and many out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the affective part of the mind is more about personality traits and characteristics, and I'm sure you're familiar with DISC. Myers-Briggs, mm -hmm. uh, CPQ, there's so many assessments out there that look at personality, um, which we use a few. Colby is a little different. So Colby looks at the cognitive dimension of the mind, which is irrespective of how smart somebody is or what their personality is, if they're extroverted or introverted. Mm -hmm. Colby looks at pure instinct, gut instinct, and in how somebody will take action. And there's no right or wrong way mm -hmm. to do that, mm -hmm. right? It is the only assessment uh, around that looks at instinct. It's been around for 30 years. Wow, it's I in didn't realize that. Yep, it's in seven countries. And actually, Kathy Colby's dad developed one of the first IQ tests in this country, which is still uh, used to this day. Mm -hmm. um, but Kathy did a lot of research into uh, really looking at how people innately take action. So... Uh, I became Colby certified in 2009. I think we've, I've administered well over a thousand. Uh, and it's a system. It looks at how somebody instinctively takes action. And then are they using those strengths, that unique ability mm -hmm. in their job? You know, and that's perfect uh, because we kind of concentrate on customer service and yeah. customer. So for, you know, the value of what you can provide, I think is incredible. And uh, mm -hmm. I look forward to uh, learning more about it as we progress. Uh, Deirdre and her team will probably be regulars on our TV Thanks. show. And uh, we're excited about that. Thank you. So today, um, we're going to talk about what is empathy. And uh, Deirdre prepared some really great questions. And I'm going to say they're good think-abouts as well. So um, why do we care about empathy in the workplace? What does that mean to me? I'm a business owner, I'm a manager, a director. Mm. Why do I really care about that? Most likely you don't. Well, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> that's really scary. Yeah, so... Um, well, what is empathy? I mean, so what is empathy, the definition? Empathy is uh, different than sympathy. Empathy is really being able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. It's showing that you actually listen uh, authentically mm -hmm. uh, to what's going on. And empathy is, uh, you know, a great diffuser in conflict situations when, uh, you know, somebody with high empathy or somebody who wants to increase their empathy skills, mm -hmm. which you can, will never hear statements like, you don't know, you didn't hear a word I said, okay? 
you're not listening. Mm -hmm. uh, usually what happens is when, when somebody is in uh, an agitated state and they're complaining, they could be complaining about a situation, they could be complaining about an individual or a group or a troop of individuals. Very often the listener wants to have the answer. You're mm -hmm. already processing the solution right. for this person who is visibly upset right. and coming to you. That's just an auto response. In communication, listening is 50%. So to right. be a great communicator, you have to have amazing listening skills, right? We are trained really not as great listeners. We're great speakers, we're mm -hmm. great responders, mm -hmm. right, verbally. Listening is not very, uh, it doesn't come easily. It's not easily. part of our nature, I it think. It just isn't. So, yeah. so empathy, why do we care about empathy? The fact is, is that most uh, business owners don't understand the importance of empathy and, and how to train people to have more empathy, mm -hmm. to be better listeners. Mm -hmm. If you're a better listener, especially, whether it's a call center environment and you're listening to a customer, right? How do you diffuse an irate customer? Yeah. But it's not just for the customer or the client, it's also empathy amongst the team with right. each other. Mm -hmm. So what, why I really got stuck on this was um, through the use of certain assessments, I'm able to look at empathy levels on an individual basis, on a team, department, company. Mm -hmm. And I started to see a huge trend of low empathy levels. And the why made sense. You know, tolerance is very short. Mm -hmm. The times we live in, people are very stressed out. You know, they're um, calling, they're complaining, they want you to listen. <clears throat> totally. Give me a solution, see you, bye. Right, you know? and, and internally, if you need to depend on somebody else to get you something so you can complete a project, let's say, or get an answer to mm -hmm. a customer. Mm -hmm. We, everybody's coming into work every day with a whole story behind them, right? Right. So our tolerance levels are low. So I started to see this pattern of low empathy levels and I thought, you know, it's an easy thing if you're aware. Self-awareness mm -hmm. is key and uh, there's a great book that actually outlines the seven steps of great leadership uh, steps on a ladder and one of them is self-awareness. So you have to be aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. where, where is your head at? Right, How are you right. showing up? Mm -hmm. Right? Whether you're the business owner, the manager, the supervisor, it doesn't matter. Well, because your how you are is going to go out to the staff. Correct. You know, if you come in crabby and you know they're going to sense something's totally. wrong, stay away because we're not going to. Or they may uh, take it personally. Break. Absolutely. They may think they did something wrong, right. and then you put somebody in the gap. Right. Right. So when you look at the empathy and and people having very low tolerance, it, it got to a point where I said, you know. What can we do? Is there anything that we can do to help people increase their levels of empathy? And so I sort of embarked on this crazy mission, mm -hmm. uh, one workplace at a time, from top to bottom, training people, because again, those steps on leadership, one is self-awareness. The second step on that ladder of being a great leader, again, I look at a leader, I don't care what your position is. I don't care what your title is. Leadership behavior is leadership behavior. Right. The second step on that ladder is empathy. Mm -hmm. And the best way you know I can describe it is for the workplaces that we've been in, training people uh, on empathy and better listening skills mm -hmm. diffuses quite a bit in terms of conflict, in terms of um, overall harmonious workplaces. Well, so then, you know, if they can understand the caller then and they feel good about themselves when they're talking to the caller, that makes a great customer experience Correct. and the retention of the customer. Absolutely. Um, you know, how does low empathy impact your uh, your profits? I mean, give us, a, give us an example of that. Sure. So we had a company, uh, we still do a client, they're about uh, 110 to 120 employees we started working with them back in 2009 and uh, did a morale and culture barometer, a uh, series of questions that we looked to see uh, uh, employee engagement mm -hmm. and employee satisfaction, right? Two different things. Right. 
Uh, so we do that amongst the staff, and then at the higher levels, you know, we bring people in and we want to understand how do they feel about the owner. And everything is confidential. Right, so, so for they example, don't have to worry. Right, so when we're reporting, 80% of your team feel valued for the work that they do, the owner does not know who's in that 80% mm -hmm. and who's in that 20%. In 20%. We, just, we just know we want to increase that number. So that's how the information is delivered back. Mm -hmm. But through these series of questions, you know, at that point, I think their revenue was uh, was down, and we were brought in to sort of figure out from an organizational development, from a people perspective, mm -hmm. what's happening here, and what, if anything, can we do? And sure enough, through some of the testing, not only uh, the barometer in terms of engagement and satisfaction, but looking at empathy levels, you know, we were looking at empathy levels of 36, 37 percent out of 100, and that was a, a huge red flag. Right, right. Um, once we started doing some training on uh, how to increase, what is empathy, how to increase empathy, uh, how to be a better listener, effective mm -hmm. communication skills, both not only to the customer, but again, working together as a team. A team. When you're not, when you don't have trust, mm -hmm. right, you know this, you're not fully engaged in what you're doing. Right, and it's. It, I find that very important. Um, a lot of times in the, in the call center industry, managers don't walk the floor. They don't know what's happening on the floor. They don't get the sense of how their employees are doing, or if they're doing something really well, going up and saying to the to the rep, "Hey, that was a great call. You, know, you handled that customer yep. great. You you listened. You communicated well. You talked about our policies. Uh, you were empowered." to do that. And we think about you mentioned, it. Or, thank you for that. Think about it. And that was not <laughs> cute, folks. Not cute. No. <laughs> none of this is rehearsed. It's uh, it just just comes out naturally. But what's interesting and you said it, you know, think about the employee mm -hmm. who doesn't get the feeling that the manager is really interested mm -hmm. in how they're doing. Let's say it's just about numbers. And that's right? so sad. Just in general, that's sad. So if I'm the employee and I'm not feeling you really care about what mm -hmm. I'm doing, let alone how I'm doing it, mm -hmm. where am I engaged? Why do I want to care if yeah. you don't care, right? That's one. Two, feedback. We had a situation the other day. You know, feedback is so critical. And, you know, you look at performance evaluations. Everybody ties performance evaluations to money. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that, that's a, a traditional, in my opinion, antiquated way. Mm -hmm. Performance evaluation is about how are you doing? What's great? Mm -hmm. What can be better? Here's some goals and objectives, some KPIs. Right. Here's what in the next 30, 60, or 90 days love to see you accomplish. And when you do see somebody doing something well, mm -hmm letting them know that so you're reinforcing that right. good behavior. Right. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, we had a situation the other day checking in on a new employee and, um, you know, the business owner said, so far, so good, you know, really tough position to fill, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, this, this girl's real, the gal's really doing very well and no complaints so far. And, you know, my question is, have you shared that? Right. Have you, ex have you discussed it? It doesn't even have to be more than a, Two minutes. Mm -hmm. hey, I just want to let you know. So far, just so happy that you're here. Yeah, really changes the dynamic, it and does. it may take a little thoughtfulness to do it if it doesn't come naturally. But in conjunction with practicing your listening skills, again, going to self-awareness, being aware to be a little mm -hmm. more thoughtful, makes a huge difference and totally affects the bottom line. So going back to that first client. Um, their profits, they went from 50 to $80 million. Wow. Now, I will not claim responsibility saying that's because we increased the empathy by I, X percent. I don't percent. know, I would. <laughs> I well, I will say it. this, they're still our client. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it has been key. And wherever I go, one of the things I do look for is, you know, where's the empathy? I mean, we once had two CEO, two co-CEOs. I think uh, one's empathy was 24%, the other was like 37%. Wow. And uh, trying to educate them on the value of mm -hmm. empathy was a little mm -hmm. difficult, you could imagine. 
Um, but they got it. Yeah. Eventually you, know? you get it. And, you know, it's, I've found over the years that the importance of the senior level management and re relating to the staff is extremely important. If you, you know, some of the, the, the CEOs, they want to be in that ivory tower and they have no idea that the importance of the, the call center, as an example, they are their lifeblood. If totally. They're, if they're not happy, it's their customer experience that suffers and their company suffers Correct. from that. Correct. You know? And it's so easy. Uh, it is. I mean, it, and how difficult is it to smile say thank you, uh, to uh, really appreciate, or even from the customer level. You know, now we, uh, you have on the, the Press 2 technologies, you have the ability to do a survey. Mm -hmm. And many of us don't mm -hmm. click, yes, I'll do the survey after right. the call. Right. Because they're, you know, they say, well, I don't know how that call is going to go. Right. But let's say you do the survey, and, that, and all that customer said was, great job, I, my problem was solved. Right. So many people forget, share it with the staff. You're reviewing that live anyway. Talk and again, to the staff, go out to the work floor, and say thank you for that. I appreciate what you did. It reinforces what's important to the company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? It's that whole value system that totally, we have. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. How do you know? We, well, we knew that. There are testing that you can do. How, what can we do to boost empathy? Hmm. Um, what's so, a good one for that? Well, a couple of things. Some of the easy ones, right? Acknowledge. Okay. Right? So if somebody comes to you with a problem, whether it's that customer over the phone, right, who's mm -hmm. complaining, something happened right. with their order, Maybe it's between the sales department and the operations department. I want my order out. I promised the customer this. And the ops people are saying, I'm sorry, we have a process to follow. And, uh, you Can't know, do it. so the, the age old battle between sales and ops, right? Mm -hmm. There's always conflict there. Mm -hmm. It could even be, a, you know, I don't want to bring it home, but in your personal relationships, if you have, you know, a spouse or a significant other who's barking, right. okay? The first thing you want to do is stop yourself from looking to respond. Right. Train yourself to listen only. And the only way you can do that, which is called active listening, mm -hmm. is to literally, you cannot listen and process at the same time. Right. It's impossible. So you really have to train yourself to listen. And then, after this person is mm -hmm. done, be able then to reiterate respond. back to them and acknowledge what was said. Wow, Laura, I understand you are so upset mm -hmm. because relay what happened right. in your own words. Don't parrot, yeah. but as if you, once you do that, once you acknowledge what's mm -hmm. been said to you, right, does a couple of things. For the, for the speaker, for the person who's venting, mm -hmm. the fact that they feel heard. Right. That's like the best thing that you could do. It deflates the wind. Mm -hmm. It's a, I've at least been listened to. And once that exhale, I've been listened to, I've been acknowledged, happens, mm -hmm. they're now more open to listening to what you may have to suggest right. as a resolve, as a resolution. Mm -hmm. But if you try to give a resolution and say, well, why don't you try this? And, you know, jump ahead and before interrupt they interrupt the are conversation. They will not hear you. Right, right. I also find that, and it, and it kind of annoys me when I'm, I'm talking to somebody, either verbally or on the phone or at a store, um, and they're interrupting me, and I know they're not listening because they haven't done anything to calm me down yet. Exactly. They haven't used words or if they're going to interrupt to say, I understand, please exactly. continue. That's right. And a lot of people just don't understand that. And no. it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a crazy thing out there. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about what's the golden rule? Oh, uh, you know, way back in kindergarten, <laughs> the golden rule principles, right? Treat others as you would like to, to be, be treated. treated. It's so simple. It, and yet we and that's so many oh, we I, I myself too at some times you forget you forget you know? exactly because we're all in a rush mm -hmm. we have a lot of demand a lot of pressure a lot of people to please a lot of things going on again behind the scenes mm -hmm. at home mm -hmm. in our lives 
maybe we didn't sleep well that night. Yeah. But when you show up and you want to show up in the best you that you can be, because that's the example you're setting. Mm -hmm. I would never um, talk down to or forget to say good morning to somebody. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, I want to engage in very long conversations. Right. The minute I, you know, I love people, mm -hmm. but I also have to get down to business and do what I right, have to do. Right. But that doesn't take away from treating people the way I would like to be treated, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Basic golden, uh, golden rule principles. Active listening. So this is a great, uh, a great way to practice how to increase uh, your empathy by practicing active listening. So. If you go to a restaurant, and I've used this example, anybody who knows me who sees this is going to be reciting this because you've heard me say it. Um, if you go to a restaurant, waiter comes over, hi, sorry, my name is Deirdre, let me share uh, today's specials. specials. So inevitably what happens? You either know exactly what you want, <laughs> right. right? You may not even be looking at the uh, waiter or the waitress, waiter. right? Mm -hmm. You may be looking down, you may be talking to the person next to you. Very rarely are you giving this person direct and really listening. listening. So a great technique for active listening, to practice active listening, and I love for people to do this for like three weeks, you know, every time you go to a restaurant, you are directed, right, to listen mm -hmm. entirely to everything that's being shared with you on the menu, mm -hmm. okay? And when it's done, be able to say, okay, so let me make sure I understood. Right. If I heard you correctly, that second yeah. special comes with the salmon, the asparagus, roasted potatoes, blah, blah. So you can't say the last one that but they I, just you know, said. I like that one because I never listen when I'm hearing that. I want you to practice it. I'm going to practice that. Right, so that's active listening. Selling, celebrating birthdays and other life events, you'd be, you probably would not be shocked. That means a lot to employees. Yeah. It's so easy. Have a cake a month for everybody. I mean, it's yeah. neglected. You know, one of the things mm -hmm. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to write a book called uh, Let Them Eat Cake, A Guide to Empathy in the Workplace. Yeah. The little things that you can do that are meaningful. Absolutely. That show your thinking. And then authentic feedback. Right. That's, as we were saying before, if somebody's doing a great job, let them know. You yeah. want to reinforce that positive right. behavior. It's not just about you didn't do this well. Mm -hmm. What did I do well? It, it's true, and we're almost out of time, believe it or not. I knew it. And I found this quote uh, on culture, and I think it really hits home. You can't expect your employees to exceed the expectations of your customers if you don't exceed the employees' expectations of management and by Howard Schultz of CEO of Starbucks. And this ties right in to everything and kind of encapsulate, yeah. encapsulates exactly what we do. So, you know, if we could, let's do a couple think abouts from our talk this morning. You lead by ex example, yeah. mentor your staff, clear career paths, continuous education. You know, we all are eager to learn. Let's continue that with our staff. Train them. Definitely. Have them go to an outside seminar because that, that makes them feel special. Wow, they spent some money on me going out to learn. Uh, walk the work floor that we talked about and recognize your staff that they are the greatest asset. One addition. Yes. Be real. Be real. Have Be work. authentic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we all know if somebody is being fake. Yeah. A great, hey, yeah, great job. You know what? Be specific. Right. Be authentic and be real. Perfect. Perfect. That's what I would add. Now we have our, our Twitter question today. Okay. Uh, it's from Sally out in the field, and she says the following: I have a senior, a valued senior employee who just isn't happy at work anymore. He is always negative, and his attitude is starting to rub off on others. Any advice on what I can do? Yeah, I mean, if we were in that situation, you know, the first thing I would do is, uh, believe it or not, uh, a Colby A. Where, you know, what are, what are this employee's unique abilities? How do they instinctively take action? Mm -hmm. I would then do another Colby, called a Colby B, to see, is their unique ability actually being used? in what, 
they're doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have strengths that are being underutilized, right. which is creating an unhappiness or a disconnect, or they're being pushed out of their comfort zone on a regular basis by certain tasks that they have to do. So mm -hmm. I'd look to see if there's disparity. You know, are their strengths really being utilized? Right. One, two, I'm a fan of getting to the root. Right. What's bothering, What's bothering yeah. you? It could be a family situation. Exactly. It could be a, t you know, an, a myriad of things. And that's empathy. And that's just, I think, just by saying, what's wrong? How you can know? I help? And it doesn't have to be in the office. Right. You know, let's take a walk. Let's go for a cup of coffee. Yeah. Um, you know, take them out of their environment. And then that, I think that would you help. You show that you care. Right. And that, Authentically. That's, that's it. What are you thinking? What right. are you feeling? here for you. How can I help? You don't mm -hmm. seem happy. Mm -hmm. We care. Mm -hmm. At least try that. You know, and I, I totally 100% agree. Well, guess what, folks? We're almost at the end of our that was show. so fast. And, you know, if you'd like to reach us uh, for Deirdre Siegel at Pear, it's D Siegel, S I E G E L, at PearCoreSolutions.com. And her office number is 516. 496-7327. And certainly, if you need to reach me, you can always Twitter at Laura Sikorsky. Uh, very excited. Thank you so Thank much you, for Laura. a really Fantastic. perfect, perfect show. And for next week, I'm also excited, equally excited, is a, our guest is Francia Smith. And her topic is going to be back to the basics. Ah. Why do we have to go back to the basics in our office environments? And it's going to be for customer service department, you know, understanding and so forth. Uh, she is a recognized customer experience uh, expert. Uh, she has her own company now, uh, CI3, where she concentrates on innovation, integration, and so forth. But I'm so excited because she and I had worked together many years ago when we developed the national program for the United States Postal Service of 1-800-ASK. USPS. She was the executive officer that was the person responsible for getting that network in place. Fantastic. And uh, she was their uh, vice president of consumer affairs and consumer advocate. So we're excited about next week's show. So with it, my friends, uh, thank you, dear. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, everyone, for watching Sikorsky's Think About, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Again, thanks. Was good it okay? Show. It was a good show. <laughs> yeah.